The artifacts and photographs now on display at the Tulsa Historical Society tell the story of Tulsa not many know about. The exhibit is called Becoming Tulsa, Cultivating City Life from a Prairie Town, 1878 to 1900. Initially, most of the people were Native American and they were moved here by the government. And so in this part of what is now Oklahoma, it was the five civilized tribes that came and more specifically the Creeks, Cherokees and Osage. Maggie Brown is the exhibit's director. She says the exhibit begins with the year 1878 because that was when Tulsa's first unofficial post office was established. The following year, the United States government said this structure was not suitable and moved it into the home of the Paramans, Creek Indians who were prominent citizens. Some of the earliest people that would have lived in the Tulsa area before it was actually Tulsa. And we do have pictures of several of the Perrymans who would have been here and owned quite a bit of the land. We have George Perryman and Mose Perryman in this picture. And in the picture down here, we have Aunt Jane Perryman. There are two very interesting artifacts in this case. The book that we see here is actually the Book of Romans translated into the Creek language. If you can read Creek, then you can actually read it. Uh, the other item we have here, the carrier is called a silent butler, but what is in the carrier, it, they're coals. And as the Creeks traveled across the country um, on the Trail of Tears, they brought the coals from their last fire in their old home and used those to start the new fire once they got to this area. She explains that it was the railroad that began Tulsa. Businesses sprang up to meet the needs of rail workers. The first citizens of Tulsa lived in tents, and the first businesses were in tents. And as people started to build mostly frame houses, they would have been building um, homes out of whatever materials would have been around and cheap mm -hmm. to use. Um, definitely they would not have had running water in the beginning. I know the first well in town was behind the Hall General Store, and so people would go and get their water from the well. Photographs from the late 1800s show stores stocked with all the dry goods needed to make a home. The first stone building was the Robert Lynch General Store. Names that remain in Tulsa's landscape today were on the store signs, like the Archer Furniture Store, which had a big stock of rocking chairs when this photo was taken. This is an apple press that was commonly used. A large pestle and mortar set was used to grind corn. Many used a typewriter like this made before the advent of the shift key. There are different keys for lower and uppercase letters. The first newspaper was the Indian Chief and it was called that very briefly before changing to the Indian Republican. And it did become the Tulsa world later on. Back in the day, organs, not pianos, were common. We also have quite a few items that are on loan from churches. And so we have a, a handmade pulpit that was brought by one of the first pastors in Tulsa, as well as a cradle that is still used today by Boston Avenue Methodist Church every Christmas. The cultivation of Tulsa meant dressing up for an occasion. These couples were photographed in their best clothes while on a picnic at Bird Creek. And there's a whole story about how people would get there. They could take the train to Sperry, and then there would be wagons waiting to take them the last two miles to get to Bird Creek. For some, marriage would mean the acquisition of a satin wedding dress that would be passed down through generations. It was a hard life for many, but solid roots were laid here for what would one day become the oil capital of the world. For ONR, I'm Liz Exon.